A large portion of the Jewish nation has returned to its homeland. But the heart, soul, and mind of much of the Jewish nation are still in exile mode. This state of affairs must and will inevitably change. This is Torah Nation TV from Jerusalem, and we are speaking with the head of Machon Chilo, Rabbi David Bar Chaim. Shalom, Rabbi Bar Chaim. Shalom. In previous interviews, the rabbi has discussed Torah Eretz Yisrael, the Torah of the land of Israel. Can the Rav provide us with another example of a significant difference between Torah Eretz Yisrael and Torah Galut? Another example of uh, a significant difference between uh, Torah Eretz Yisrael and the Torah that was common in the Galut and the exile is what the Talmud Bavli in Masechet Sukkah Daf Kavheth refers to as the difference between a Davar Gadol and a Davar Katan. I will explain. The Talmud there speaks about the greatness of Rabbi Yohanan ben Zakkai, who was the greatest of the Hachamim uh, in Am Yisrael at the time of the destruction of the Second Temple. And it relates there how he had complete mastery of Mikra. Mikra is the Tanakh, Mishnah, Talmud, Halachot, Agadot, etc. It goes on to uh, list a, a number of things beyond that. And it says that he was also fully uh, conversant and uh, aware and familiar with things that are referred to as Davar Gadol and Davar Katan. The Talmud asks, what is a Davar Gadol and what is a Davar Katan? What is a great thing, Davar Gadol? Important, uh, or shall we say, extremely important, extremely profound uh, aspects of Torah? as opposed to Davar Katan. All parts of Torah are important, of course, but nevertheless, one can and one must distinguish between different aspects and disciplines within the Torah, and this is what the Talmud does. And uh, it asks, what is, what is a Davar Gadol? What are the great and profound, important areas of Torah being referred to? And what are the Dvarim uh, Katanim Yoter, the smaller things, the things that are less profound, less central, to the Torah. And the answer of the Talmud uh, may be surprising to some because it says that Davar Gadol refers to Ma'aseh Merkava, in other words, uh, certain esoteric uh, aspects of, uh, of the Torah, of Jewish uh, theology, understanding how, and theosophy, understanding how the uh, world works, so to speak, how Hashem uh, interacts with, with the world. This has to do with Ma'aseh Merkava, and this is a, uh, an esoteric and uh, mystical uh, knowledge which was taught to very few people, as uh, is discussed in Masechet Harira. And the Katan says the Talmud refers to Hawayoth Dabaye Warava. In other words, the halachic discussions that we find, or the type of halachic discussions that we find in the Talmud frequently, uh, that were discussed and debated between Abaye and Rava, all kinds of uh, details to do with halacha. In other words, uh, relatively uh, abstruse, relatively uh, unlikely, sometimes unlikely or not very common aspects of halakha, but nevertheless one has to uh, understand and inquire as to what would the halakha be in this case, or what is the uh, halakha uh, relating to this particular question or this particular detail of this miswa, of this halakha. Many of these discussions we find in the in the Talmud Bavli, and they're referred to as Hawayoth Dabaye Warava, the discussions of Abaye Warava. And Rashi explains that what the Talmud means to say is that Rabbi Hanan ben Zakkai, who lived many generations uh, before Abaye Warava, something like uh, 300 years before their time, nevertheless, he had uh, already thought 
of and been aware of these questions and these discussions and these issues and these details and he had answers for, for these questions. He had considered these matters and uh, had discussed them and had arrived at conclusions regarding these halachic uh, issues except that the, these uh, points of halakha, these sefekot, these doubts or these dubious questions which require discussion the, and the conclusions that he reached and others like him uh, perhaps in earlier generations reached, these uh, issues were forgotten by later hachamim and were once again uh, brought up for discussion in, in a later generation, namely the generation of Abe and Rava. The upshot of this uh, statement in the Talmud is, is as follows, that in the Torah we have things that are referred to and can be and should be referred to correctly as a Davar Gadol with reference to something else which is considered or referred to as a Davar Katan, something of lesser importance. Not that it is not important and all the Mepharshim from the time of the Rishonim onwards are at pains to explain that all parts of the Torah and uh, certainly the Halakha are very important because without, the, without Halakha there is no Torah. Without a system for implementing the Torah, the ideas and the concepts and the principles of the Torah in the real world, then uh, there is no Yahadut, there is no Torah. And yet there is a difference between the system the legal system which provides this practical real-world uh, underpinning and uh, actualization of the Torah in, in the world and human affairs and the ideas and concepts and beliefs that are the, the real basis and foundation of the Torah. And therefore, because we must make a distinction, we, we refer to one as a davar gadol, something of great importance, and the other as something, or something of very uh, great centrality and uh, very fundamental to Judaism, and the other as something davar katan, because every halachic detail in and of itself is is a, an halachic detail, important but not absolutely fundamental to Judaism. Now, it's it's well known. It's hardly a secret that in the vast majority of yeshivot today, but not just today, this is also has been the case for many centuries, if not more than that, in most yeshivot, all the areas of, of the Torah that we could reasonably refer to as davar gadol, those things which are fundamental and uh, essential to a, a, an appreciation and understanding, uh, a conceptualization of what the Torah, what Judaism is all about, why, it, why this thing called Torah exists, what is its aim, what is its aim in terms of the individual Jew, what is its aim in terms of the Jewish nation, what is its message and aim vis-a-vis -vis the entire world. These issues we can refer to as a Devar Gadol, as a fundamental, essential and uh, basic issues which are the, the true essence and, and meaning and purpose of the Torah. Where can we find these issues? These issues are to be found in uh, these discussions, these ideas, these concepts are to be found first and foremost in the Tanakh, if one studies the Tanakh in depth. Second of all, these things are to be found in the Haggadot or Agadot, Agadot of Hazal, uh, which appear in uh, much of the Hazalic literature which we have, including in the Talmudim. And they also can be found in uh, later works written in the time of the Geonim, the Rishonim, medieval times and later down to the present time, in books uh, that discuss these issues. If we were to mention just a few from, medi from the medieval period, we could mention the book Mivhar Ha'imunoth Wa'adhe'oth of Rav Sa'adya Ga'on. We could mention Havath uh, Halevavoth of Rabbi Bahir ben Yosef. We could mention the Moran Vuchim of uh, Rambam. Uh, we could mention Sefra Kuzari by Rabbi Yudah Halewi. These are some of the uh, great 
works of Jewish philosophy and thought and ethics that uh, describe and discuss the most essential and basic concepts uh, and uh, notions and the basic aims of of Judaism as a system, as a as a religion, as a civilization. And as I said, it is no secret that in most yeshivot these are precisely those areas of Torah that are not studied. In almost all yeshivot, the entire day and the entire week and the entire year is dedicated to the study of the Talmud. And in fact, not even both Talmudim, but just the Talmud Bavli as a rule, and not many other aspects and works of uh, Hazal, such as studying the Mishnah in depth and, in, and uh, knowing it uh, well, and the Tosefta and other, other works by Hazal, like the Sifra, the Sifra, etc., etc. Essentially, the only topic that is considered necessary or uh, required, and certainly the, the, the main important area of study, is, is the Talmud and uh, the halachic discussions that uh, are to be found there, with all the commentaries and discussions that pertain to it. Now, if someone were to say, yes, however, we find in the Talmud also much in the way of Agadah, this is first of all true, this is a fact. One thing to mention about this fact is that, again, in most yeshivoth, those parts of the Gemara are simply skipped over. There is no shiur given on those parts of the Gemara. There is no uh, time spent on these things. If someone wants to, they may look at it themselves, perhaps in their own time, but certainly no emphasis is placed on these things at all. That's number one. Number two, it's also an interesting uh, point to note that the vast majority of the Agadoth, in other words, the non-halachic material in the Talmud Bavli, is actually in origin from Eretz Yisrael. Most of the Hachamim who are quoted uh, as, uh, as uh, formulating and conveying, transmitting uh, statements to do with Agadah and uh, Musar, etc., which are not hal purely halachic in nature, most of that material in the Talmud Bavli is quoted in the names of Hachamim in Eretz Yisrael. In other words, we see clearly that these issues, these ideas, these topics, this area of Torah study was taken much more seriously and was much more uh, in evidence in Eretz Yisrael. The approach to Torah in Eretz Yisrael was more comprehensive. And this is also, uh, therefore, what we see in the Talmud, uh, in the Talmud Yerushalmi. There is a certain synthesis, as it were, between the Agadah and the Halakha, these two parts of the Torah Shabal Peh, in the Talmud Yerushalmi, which does not exist or which is not really in evidence in the Talmud Bavli, where we see a dichotomy between the halachic aspects and the philosophical, theological, uh, ethical, uh, agadic aspects and discussions. This approach, which characterizes uh, the Talmud Bavli and the uh, Yahadut of, of Bavel and, and of uh, Chutzlaretz of the Galuth, whereby the halakha became the central and, in fact, in essence, almost the entire uh, curriculum for Torah study in, in any, any yeshiva that uh, took itself seriously. This model of Torah, uh, over time, became the, almost, one could say, the only model of Torah. It's also interesting to note that all the books that we mentioned a moment ago, such as Moran Avuchim and the Kuzari and Hobot Halavavot, etc., all these works were written by Chachamim, uh, who were not Ashkenazi. They were all Svaradim, living in the non-Ashkenazi parts of the Jewish world. We see that these parts, these aspects of Torah, were discussed and taken much more seriously uh, in, the, in that part of the Jewish world, rather than the Ashkenazi part of the Jewish world, which uh, almost exclusively concentrated on, on halakha. This is a very essential difference between the Torah of Chutz Laaretz and the Torah of Eretz Yisrael, because the Torah of Chutz Laaretz is about survival. The Torah of Galuth is about maintaining a system which will uh, be conducive to the Jewish people surviving until some future time when their situation will Bezrat Hashem change for the better. Whereas the Torah of Eretz Yisrael is looking at the bigger picture, 
the Davar Gadol, and not just the Davar Katan. It's looking at the the big questions, the big issues of what is this Torah all about, not just what is this Halakha about, and whether this particular thing is Asur or Mutar, whether this action is correct or incorrect, and whether one has to do this or one should do that in that particular situation. But rather, on top of all this, which is very, very important, one also has to know what the Torah as a system, as a uh, system of thought, as a philosophy, as a... Uh, a, a, a civilization which is designed to create a certain kind of nation, a certain kind of society. What are the ideas, what are the uh, areas of study in the Torah which uh, enlighten us in, in this regard? This is a very important aspect of Torah Eretz Yisrael. This is something that Rav Kook, even before he came on Aliyah to Eretz Yisrael, and even more uh, Obviously, and more vigorously, this uh, approach was uh, taken by Rav Kook when he arrived here in Eretz Yisrael. He made a point of stressing time and again in letters to people, in uh, public pronouncements, that people who study in yeshiva, and in fact, for that matter, any Jew who, and every Jew should, of course, study Torah on a regular basis, that all Jews who study Torah should make it their business to study as well as Halakha and Talmud, also study these aspects of Torah. Thank you, Rabbi Bar Chaim. A word to our viewers. If you identify with Rabbi Bar Chaim's message and would like to sponsor or dedicate a video interview with the Rabbi in honor or memory of a loved one, or if you would like to obtain Birkon Nusach Eretz Yisrael, please email us at office at machonchilo.org